Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Roll Runner, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Critical Role. That's right, I'm finally admitting to myself that I've been a massive fan of Critical Role for the last year or so. I'm also LGBTQ+, and with the introduction of new characters in Campaign 2, I'm going to be talking about Mr. Clay and of course Keg's arousal rate, as well as many other things to do with representation and the integrity, I suppose, of the LGBTQ characters in the show. If you don't watch Critical Role, however, this video is not going to be for you as I am going to be talking about loads of little, little details and spoilers. So if you're not up to date with episode 28 of Campaign 2, then click off. I know YouTubers don't normally say go away, but that's what I'm saying today. So I'm going to kick off with campaign one and I've called this one Finding Their Feet because it didn't really start off with the ideal representation of LGBTQ plus characters and lives until it got on a little bit, it really developed some characters and got going with the story. Now Matt has done a wonderful job of creating some NPCs who are LGBT. We're to I'm talking about here Gilmore and Allura and Kima and Jamon Zahord. There's been other characters too that have kind of dripped in and out of the uh, LGBTQ plus community and it has been a very nice thing to see as an LGBTQ plus person. But Gilmore's representation did not start off very well for Critical Role. It was initially a very stereotypically gay, flamboyant character. It was used as a joke by a lot of the cast um, and laughed at when uh, Vex and Gilmore, not Vex, Vax and Gilmore were trying to outflirt each other. It was very much a joke and it wasn't taken very seriously and it wasn't a very welcome in introduction by some of the LGBTQ plus community. Now for me, I was like, whoa, they're actually doing this. Great, this is what I want to see. So I didn't think about it too harshly at the time, but looking back, yeah, wasn't great in hindsight. However, Gilmore has seen a lot of character development over the course of Campaign 1 and is now a much loved character by many, many fans, critters, whatever you want to call them, and uh, one of my favourite characters, and I was so glad that he didn't die because oh, he had my heart. Now as well as Gilmore there was Allura and Kima, they were one of my favourite NPCs. I think it's just because they were in a queer relationship, but Allure is bisexual, so he had some bisexual representation with a same gender couple, which was fab, and they had a happy ever after. I was so worried that they were gonna kill off the lesbians. I know Allure is bisexual, but they didn't. Thank goodness, thank you Matt for creating such a well-loved character. I think I remember him saying somewhere that it wasn't, they weren't gonna be main characters, but the players loved them so much, and I definitely did. They were really solid LGBT characters for campaign one. And towards the end of the campaign, we saw Jamon Saord being a major non-binary character and recurred many times. And as a non-binary person, that was again fab to see. And I loved that uh, they were given their due by both players and Matt. Uh, Matt has been a fantastic DM with a lot of different pronouns across the two campaigns um, and has never failed and whenever he has done he's corrected himself pretty much straight away all the time. Um, however the players haven't been perfect but Matt from I feel like from Jamon Saord onwards has been really strong at making sure they get it right and that has been wonderful to see and hey there's a non-binary character Woo. now of course we've got vex and vax i'm also going to group zara in with the twins too because they are all canonically bisexual characters um there's a little bit of controversy over how their bisexuality was dealt with and i'm not gonna lie i agree with a lot of the kind of negativity unfortunately towards them because i felt like their bisexuality or their attraction to same genders was treated as something fun as a joke especially with vax's uh, flirtation with gilmore at the beginning um it wasn't treated as nearly as seriously as for example vax's flirtation with keyleth so i wasn't too impressed with the how those characters were portrayed and i think that's because the, the players themselves as far as i know i don't want to assume too much but the players themselves aren't bi and uh didn't quite understand the uh full experience of a bi person uh now that's not really a super criticize crit criticism 
criticism of uh, the players because I know the players wonderfully support the LGBT community. Uh, I just think perhaps either they could have thought about the bisexuality a bit more. Maybe they had done. Maybe that's just um, a bad comment on my part or they they could have just made them straight that is not for me to decide however um i do think that the players can do whatever they want with the character sexualities and of course being lgbt is also fun and great so there's also the happy fun jokey side of just having attractions to people so uh I'm mixed about Vex, Vax, and Zara. What I did like, however, was Tarion's uh, depiction by Sam as well, because Tarion has had uh, homophobia in his life, and I really was missing some struggle from the LGBT characters for being LGBT, because I think that's kind of a major part of being LGBT, unfortunately, and while obviously we all wish for a world where there is no homo bi trans queer phobia there is and sometimes when you want to relate to a character you want to see your story in them and for me being lgbt having experienced some forms of uh, queer phobia it felt like i could actually relate to someone who was uncomfortable at some point at least with their sexuality and then it was even greater when we learned that larry and terry ended up together we had another happily ever after for a same gender couple and that was absolutely fantastic again for me to see so i really think with the rocky beginnings of gilmore's uh, representation, presentation, the way Raishan, for example, was treated and her pronouns, I think they've really grown and we've grown to love the LGBT characters because they've had some depth to them by the end and that has been really great to see in campaign one. Now I've called campaign two's section all the queer characters and I'm pretty sure you already know why we have three player characters who are LGBT. We've got Bo, we've got Molly Mork, we've got Yasha, we've got Mr. Clay. Now we've also got plenty of other NPCs who are LGBT as well. We've got Dolan and we've got his husband that I can't remember the name of right now which is real shame and I'm pretty sure we've seen other LGBT characters like uh, Bryce I think was genderqueer and we've got plenty of others too. So honestly campaign two has started wonderfully for me. I'm gonna start with Bo because when I first met and saw and understood Bo uh, I wasn't too impressed with the way her gayness was presented because it was very stereotypical and just knowing that Marisha as far as I know isn't gay um, it felt a little bit off. Now I have since watched uh, a Dis Bo the Disaster Lesbian uh, montage and I have seen actually there's a bit more to Bo just a lot of her comments get swept up in what's going on in the action but Bo is this awkward lesbian basically and I relate to that on some level a lot so initially I wasn't I was unsure about how Marisha was gonna play Bo but now I really do see the value in her and she's just wonderfully awkward. I love it. We've also got Yasha. Now I'm pretty sure Yasha is somewhere on the spectrum just from little tidbits that I've seen around but obviously we haven't had anything confirmed yet and I just want to know the backstory because uh, I want to see if her sexuality is dealt with at all um, and whether that comes into play in her backstory because I feel like we don't know too much about who she is yet um, and I'm really interested to see what the meat of her story is going to be and I really hope is to do with her being LGBT. Now I'm going to talk about Keg before I talk about Talison's characters because Talison is just on another level um, but we're going to talk about Keg for a second. Keg, well all I've got in my notes is that Keg is aroused um, but I do quite like the fun side of that. I think um, while initially I thought that was just going to be the main joke, um, it's a little bit one dimensional, um, but I think as a guest character, as we're not going to see the character development in such a way, unfortunately, I think that's just going to be the imprint we've got, although I'm sure Ashley's got much more backstory than uh, we as the audience are seeing. So I'm not going to judge Ashley for that, uh, because I think that's a great comedic side of Keg, um, but obviously I don't 
uh, think that's the same sort of representation, but hey, at least it's there. I think that if there was a straight character, I wouldn't have been so happy to see Kek. So, representation, take it where it is. Of course, we've got to talk about Taliesin and his characters. Now, I heard anecdotally that Taliesin is bi, but I'm not sure, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much, but I can definitely see that he's put some more thought into the queerness of his characters. Molly was wonderfully queer, and I absolutely loved it. There was some uh, gender fluidity going on there with his expression and just the way he carried himself. It was very hard to explain, but I felt like his whole body was queer as opposed to just one part of it and that is something that I really relate to. Um, it didn't feel like it was an afterthought, it was part of him completely and wholly. So for me there was something more to Molly Mort than there was it is to Bo and Yasha and uh, I don't know Vax from the previous series and thank you Talison for really showing us that side of him I suppose I'm sure all the players embody some part of their character so uh, thank you Talison long may he reign of course then we've been introduced to Mr Clay ever so recently and oh my gosh he is me that is just wow. I see myself so much in Mr. Clay already and we've barely seen him, know his backstory or anything. But for me, Mr. Clay is wonderfully queer in his presentation and I love it. Um, that is how I enjoy presenting and I wish I was a little bit more brave, I suppose, to present closer to that sort of way. Um, also that he's very peaceful, that he's not this outgoing, flamboyant, chatty individual who flirts with everyone. He's just, he's just there, he's quiet, he's in the corner some of the time, and I appreciate that because that's the sort of person I am. Not afraid to be LGBT, but also not super sexual, not super chatty. And I really like to see that in a character. So Taliesin, again, has done a wonderful job. Mr. Clay seems like a bit of a loner or an outcast, and sometimes LGBTQ plus folks feel like that. I know how I have at some point or other. And again, that's something that we already immediately have got from Mr. Clay. So Taliesin's really doing a good job. So it wouldn't surprise me if he was actually a member of the LGBTQ plus community, but uh, we don't know, and I don't really know for certain. So we're gonna, again, ignore that. So I've been talking for a long time about LGBTQ plus characters in Critical Role, but the question is why, why is it so important to me? Well, that's because I'm LGBTQ plus and I like to see representation of my community in the media because we don't see very much representation at all. And I've seen a few comments and a few threads about why do they need so much representation? It just feels shoehorned in, it doesn't feel real. Obviously the percentage of our population is not the same as the percentage of um, the Exandria population being LGBTQ+. Now to that I answer, well there's actually a lot more LGBTQ plus people in this world than you think. And also why does the percentage have to be the same? It's a fantasy world, Matt can do whatever he wants with it. And thirdly, it doesn't matter if the percentage is the same or not in Exandria. If we see more representation of ourselves, we feel like we're supported, that our stories are being told, because that's what a lot of cultural media is about. We want to see our stories told in whatever way we wish. I know it's a fantasy world, so it's not going to be the same story, but to see our stories there in some form is really nice for the LGBTQ plus community. And um, we, we need characters. For me, to see people commenting going, life isn't like this, for me, that life is like that. I have a lot of LGBTQ plus friends, probably about 70% of them are LGBTQ plus. So for me, having pretty much all the characters be LGBTQ plus is just normal life. And I always relish the time when I can see that reflected because that makes me feel a little bit more normal whatever normal is because while I can be super confident be like yeah I'm not normal that's great I'm gonna embrace my difference at the same time you want to feel like 
you're one of the gang at some point and to feel one of the gang in critical role is pretty cool um i really like DD. i really like role playing and to see that part of me re represented in a community that i love is is wonderful i know that the players and matt supports the lgbtq plus community so much and yeah they make mistakes but that is part of being human i know that the the uh, will to support us is there especially obviously we see more of matt and from matt anyway but especially from matt and of course talison i have an inkling as well um and but all the cast really support the lgbtq plus community as we saw with their orlando tribute um on one of their streams um so for me this is really wonderful to see more and more lgbtq plus characters obviously i'm gonna wish for more um i really hope we see more non-binary people um um, and I hope we see more ace people and I hope asexuality is discussed a bit more because uh, that is just the way a lot of people are and it's instead of um, it not being there it just isn't talked about you just the character doesn't flirt with people for example but that is not what a lot of ace people want to see and i hope we see more of that so if any of the cast are watching which you're probably not but hello if you are um that would be great um i think there's a lot of a lot of things i could talk about with critical role that's currently whizzing through my brain but uh i think this video is long enough as it is so if you enjoyed this video it's a bit different to my other role playing videos do give it a like and tell me down in the comments below if you want to see more discussions of critical role because i am a mega fan just by the way i'm talking i can tell i really like the show so uh if you want to see more of my thoughts on critical role let me know and i will see you in another video bye bye